So some of you have probably heard that OpenAI has released a new set of features. Um, talked about uh, reinstating search in, searching the internet with Bing on the web browser and on the mobile app. And they've also released something called Vision, which allows you to ask GPT-4 to actually look at an image and ask things about it. So I wanna demonstrate that to you here, um, but really quickly, uh, I'll show you how to do this. So you'll see this little box down here where you can attach an image uh, now right down there. This is again for GPT-4. If you're a Plus subscriber on the app, you'll have these blue icons there next to the search bar uh, where you can take a picture or pull up your gallery and all that. Now, they've been rolling this out. They were supposed to roll this out two weeks ago. They said, we will begin rolling it out, and it's been random and all over the place. So if you're a Plus user, you may not have access to this yet. But I just wanted to show you some of the cool things. Now, if you search for this on Twitter, uh, you'll get a bunch of examples. Some are really cool, but I'm always thinking, okay, what's the pragmatic use for a knowledge worker, especially in legal? So let me just start with some uh, just mind-blowing things or a thing that kind of was my very first test with it. So when I got it um, behind me, you'll see I always have these books. And so I just I literally just took a picture of them and it asks you to to help focus open AI because it doesn't necessarily it's going to examine the entire image. So you can draw or point to things in there. I did that with the white circle to kind of focus on the books. And you see my prompt there. I literally just said, what are these books? That's that's a pretty basic prompt. But I just wanted to test it out. And lo and behold, it actually gave me all these books. Now, it did note that um, some authors' names were not necessarily visible or anything like that. But it's kind of crazy because some of these authors' names are, are very hard to find in here. And so it did a really good job. So I was thinking, well, you know, how great would it be if I have, you know, we all have lots of us tend to have lots of books. I've got bookcases all over there. One, just to inventory them, to find them, right? Take a picture. Sometimes it's tough to find the book. So um, you can sort of use this to uh, to do that. Notice it, it listed these. If you look at it, it listed these from the books that appear in the left. It started there and listed those sort of in that order. So it went from left to right. So very helpful. But okay, fine, Josh, maybe not the most helpful thing. So I went to another life thing. Then we're going to get to a legal use case. Um, so here I, we all have these cords. Thank you, Google and Apple and Microsoft for having all of these adapters and cords. And I know lots of people have a hard time staying up to date on those. So I just grabbed an old one just to see if it could tell me what this is. Now I said, what type of plug is this? And it gave me a very, like what the cord is. I mean, it's a barrel plug or DC power. Thank you. So I said, what kind of tip? Now, notice I did not circle it. Uh, so it's it's not really focused, although I guess it's trying to do it. Here I took another picture and I took the end of it. So it got to be the shape. I said, okay, now can you tell me? And boom, it nailed it. Can tell me what kind of cord. So again, is it a pragmatic legal use case? No, but really helpful. I mean, man, there's so many adapters I have for my uh, video days. Uh, documentary film days and all that, that I'm sure when I go back and I have old machines, video machines, editing bays and all that, just taking the pictures, who knows how you could use this in your life. Let's get to something wild, okay? Let's get to something wild. So I always use this, this anonymized master services agreement, this MSA. And what I did is I just pulled it up in Word. I just took one page from it and I changed a provision in it. Now, in today's world, almost everything is digital, but occasionally, depending on your practice and where you practice, you might run into paper contracts and different versions of paper contracts. Now, yes, you can, you know, OCR these things and scan them and all that, and that works too. I was just trying to really sort of, again, figure out a good use case. So I printed out one page, uh, page four, um, and then I made a, a change to the most favored customer language. 
I basically changed the language. It's one sentence that I removed from the original and changed to basically say there would be no retroactive correction. This would be a go forward change only. You don't need to know the particulars of that, but that would fundamentally change the rights and obligations of the parties in the contract. And that's all I did. Now, I will note that when I did that, some of the spacing here changed, like uh, the last word of a paragraph appears on, on page five. It doesn't appear on that. I note that for a very specific reason. Let's pull this up. So here are the two images. Okay, now I didn't use a circle here or anything like that. I just wanted them to, to just be consume the whole page. These are not high quality. Look, there's a shadow here and that matters. But this is the prompt. What is substantively different between these two pages that changes the rights and obligations of the party? Say I had two paper, I didn't have digital, I didn't have a scanner or it was really bad with OCR or whatever, I don't know. But I want to at least get a sense for what are the changes? Are there any differences? Looking at them formatting wise, they almost look identical. Um, you know, Spidey sense, you can tell, oh, there's a, there's, there's a word that got shifted to page five. So I know there's a change in here. Yes, of course, if you're a lawyer, you're gonna read everything, okay? So I'm not saying that, I'm trying to demonstrate the power of this feature. So I asked it, what has substantially changed? Now, you can see that um, it's picking up <laughs> some things um, in here, you go through here and very nuanced things. And I think it's related more to how the quality of the picture was it's saying emphasized here and all that. There might be shadows at play. But anyway, number two, it caught the change. OK, so this isn't foolproof and it isn't laser surgically focused. So, yeah, I would look at each one and be like, OK, second. OK, this is kind of a generic one. Um, number two, my eyes would go right to that section and I would start comparing those. And lo and behold, I would find it. If I went on to the next one regarding taxes, um, I would sort of check that looks to be the same, so on and so forth. So, again, a quick pass a way to sort of get focused, maybe even just double check your eyes and your brain. You know, this is page four. We're looking at it fresh. Can you imagine if there was 50 pages? Um, just a really interesting use case. I'm going to continue to play with this more, um, but I uh, wanted to show it with to you. So if you got plus, um, here's a tip. Uh, if you are going to use the app, close the app and then reopen the app. That's how you're going to refresh to see if you got vision or not. Um, and again, they're rolling out voice, Google Voice, and I'll be demoing that in another one. So anyway, have fun with vision if you have it.